that's what I said now Prince is Hey guys, Ash here, coming at you today with my main account in Clash Royale. I wanted to highlight a deck that I've been using and having success with, and uh, as the case with many decks that I find, it was actually a deck that I lost to. I'm sure you guys have been in the same boat. You have a deck that you've been playing for quite a while, and then someone just totally tears you apart, and uh, then you try out their deck. I don't know how many times I've copied an opponent's deck, sometimes for success, sometimes without success, but either way, this guy here beat me, Mood46 and it was actually a really cool deck that he was using with both of the princes and uh, it's just such a fast moving deck that I thought I'd bring it to you guys because I'm, ab I'm absolutely loving this deck so I'm gonna go ahead and show a few replays including the loss uh, by yours truly to this guy and uh, then we'll go ahead and play a live match it's kind of the form I'm taking when I highlight these decks we kind of show off a couple highlights and then we do a live match together so that's gonna be the format of today's episode as well and we'll see what my thoughts process was here so I'm gonna get inside my mind rather than my opponent's head and then we'll flip the switch because I'll be actually be using that deck in the rest of the episode. So on this deck here that, uh, that I'm playing with, I just it's a pretty basic Royal Giant deck, right? With the Royal Giant and the P.E.K.K.A. to counter other Royal Giants. If I'm going against them, Royal Giant obviously so popular along with the Hog. It's actually nice to show off a deck here that doesn't involve either the Golem, the, uh, the Royal Giant, or the Hog. So I go super aggressive with my Royal Giant here. Huge mistake uh, by yours truly. And I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, get a significant amount of damage off my right tower now he has barbarians coming at me in the left what a big misplay by me without royal giant i should have just defended and then waited meanwhile he was able to really capitalize by getting both the dark prince and the normal prince on the on the board at the same time they're up against my right tower it's really hard to stop the dark prince and the prince together obviously that's not new to anybody but the reason it's so difficult to stop is because obviously the splash damage by the dark prince makes it really difficult to defend against because I can't use goblins I can't use barbarians obviously you can use barbarians in a pinch but they do uh, they do a decent amount of damage to barbarians a dark prince can almost take out barbarians so I tried to play defense there I didn't have any options so I applied to tried to play defense with a royal giant there turning it into something offensively and it kind of works but he's able to stop me with some barbarians of his own he goes ahead and uses arrows really quickly takes down my royal giant and I'm not able to capitalize on that counter push there. I really screwed up by putting my Royal Giant a little bit too far back there and I lost that right tower. But it's not really going to matter. He has a defensive answer to everything I'm trying to do. That's the cool thing about his deck there. And I mean, as with any deck, if you're going to play the Elixir Collector, you need to play the Elixir Collector. And that's a mistake that I made in this, in this deck that I'm playing right now is that if you have the Elixir Collector and you have it up before you get at a disadvantage, before they take down one of your towers, you have to use it, right? So especially if you're either in the lead or if it's a tie game, you always want to play your Elixir Collector before you go on a big offensive push. So you can see here he was able to beat me very handily there. Uh, so I, I went ahead and I stole his deck, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to try this deck out, see if he's just a really a bit much better player than I am, which could also be the case, or to see if the deck is really that strong as well. So I have not lost yet since with the deck, and I really enjoy it. These are against, uh, I think, one level 10 in here, so I won't play that one but we will show the uh, the two level 11 matches and you'll get a feel for the, how the deck works now that I'm playing it in this match so he's going to use the minor this, I'm going against a minor player right now minor another popular card in the game right now usually in combination with a hog type cycle deck and uh, obviously you can use the minor as well to try to sneak in a P.E.K.K.A. or spear goblins or goblins in this case to the tower while it is distracted obviously minor obviously really really good against the princess as well so here I don't have an answer for the hog because I did play the elixir collector so we get to hit or two off my tower not really the end of the world not too worried about it fire spirits are becoming more and more popular in the game depending on levels they can actually take down a minion horde if you have a one level advantage on your fire spirit so certainly a very very viable troop now this guy has a very good usage of the zap spell they're able to stop my prince on his charge so at this point i'm just going to reload i probably should have played the second elixir collector at this point but instead i think he comes at me with a minor right now he does so he has it selected 
collected, places the miner on the board to take out my princess, so then I'm kind of forced to go away from the elixir collector and uh, try to mount a defense. So I know he's playing a lot of cards here. He plays the miner, he plays the minions, and then he plays the fire spirits here, all one after another, so I know he's going to be low on elixir, and this is where I make my big push here. He uses the zap spell, but he's not going to have enough to stop this little onslaught here. Now, I make a mistake here, and I think I make this mistake a few times throughout these first few matches, and I place my prince before my dark prince. Always make sure you don't do what I do there. Make sure you put the dark prince first, and then the prince. Obviously, the dark prince has that splash damage, and it can absorb more hits than the prince does. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and try to defend that left tower and try to sneak in some troops onto the right tower when he least expects it, because I think at this point he expects me to stay in that left lane because I'll be defending and uh, maintaining an offense. So I'm going to try to sneak in a prince there in the right-hand lane, and I'm just able to do so. And I've always put the skeletons, that's why the skeletons are so great in this deck, because if you can get them onto the tower, they're obviously going to almost double the amount of damage that the prince is going to be able to do to that tower because of all the added DPS, and they're obviously not going to be targeted. Let's go ahead and fast forward so I can get into a live match here. So that was a three crown. He kind of just gave it up at the end there. So uh, it was such a great strategy, though, as far as the uh, having both princes in the same deck. You're really able to, to pull some sneaky attacks. It's all about maintaining that elixir advantage. And then when you know that the defender or your opponent, I should say, has expended too much in terms of elixir, that's when you can sneak in one, if not two, of those princes. So it's all about defending well with your other cards and then trying to sneak in a prince and a dark prince on the other tower or on the tower depending on uh, what the situation is. So again here I'm going to go ahead and make sure I play my elixir collector nice and early. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, have to play something here. So I'm going to play a prince way back in the back of my tower here. He's going to use the poison hog combo. It seems like everybody's using poison lately uh, and for, for good reason. Poison is really really powerful especially uh, when you're going to use it against a tower and elixir collector and whatever troops I drop for defense. And when you're hitting three targets with any direct damage spell, that's always a really good thing. So at this point, it looks like he's going to defend pretty well against my prince. In fact, I don't even touch his tower there. So uh, that was not how I want it to work out. And now he has the two elixir collector advantage to me. Uh, I'm going to put my elixir collector on the map, try to even things out there. But I know I'm at an elixir disadvantage right now. Now he's coming at me with a hog. He knows that as well. I'm going to play these barbarians as soon as I possibly can. He's going to get a couple hits on this right tower here. So that, again, and now he has the poison spell. The thing about the poison, it has some sneaky damage to my tower, and what I can run into, I'm going to put a prince in the left lane here. What you can run into here, if they use the poison spell correctly, and the skeleton's just barely uh, placed in time to get that prince off that tower, there's so the poison spell. If they just keep periodically dropping it on an elixir collector and a tower throughout the match, next thing you know in a match like this, it's pretty evenly matched, that when he has a counter to everything I throw at him, and I have a counter to everything he throws at me, except for the poison spell, you can see about half of the damage off my tower now, just from the continual usage of the poison spell. So, I have one collector on the board, he has two, gonna have to play something here, uh, th figure he's gonna play the hog, which he does, so I'm gonna play barbarians, obviously my favorite counter to the hog, especially when this deck is the barbarians. Now I'm gonna get something going, hopefully here offensively, so I have both of my princes, another poison spell, both of my princes on the map here, this cannon is doing a great job. When they have a cannon or any kind of defensive unit in combination with skeletons, it's, it's pretty difficult with this deck, I'd imagine, because of all those targets. So Barbarians, again, against the Musketeer, a hog combo. And again, if he can get us get one shot on my tower at a time, he's going to do some, uh, some good damage here. So let's go again to the opposite uh, lane here with a Prince. Let's see if he has an answer this time. Going to back it up with some Goblins, and he does, in fact, have that cannon up. Should have been ready for it. Wasn't 100% sure if he would. Let's play the Barbarians again. Things are not looking too well for me here. I got a few hits off both of the towers, but he has a significant damage done to my right tower. I have another big push going. I don't think he has the cannon up. In fact, I don't. Uh, he can't possibly have it up because he just used it there. He might have cycled enough now with these skeletons on the map to get that cannon up on the board, but he has enough answers. I mean, my troops are just clogged down. I do have the Elixir Collector up on the map, and he does not, so I'm going to keep spamming troops in the meantime. He uses a poison spell, which it might have been ill-advised there uh, if I can drop a prince quickly. So now I have three goblins onto the tower. I have now a dark prince. Uh, I need arrows. I'm getting close. 
close, guys. I'm getting close. There it is. Boom. Wow. That was an intense match. Jeez. I thought he had me there with that poison. That's what I talked about. The poison can just totally bleed out a tower, but I pulled it off at the very end there. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and end the episode there. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any deck suggestions you want me to try out, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to bring some of those to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And, as always, take care, guys.